Sun Beetle Enclosure first became one of my favourite enclosures. One of my favourite builds. We learnt how to care for them, saw them take their first steps and go through various enclosure designs and changes. And they were doing well. More than well. Everything was peaceful and full of life in this colourful land. Until the attack began. Subscribe and join the team. I'm Sean and welcome to the SG Animals universe. Let's cut right to the chase guys. It's a sad world in the beetle enclosure at the moment. The once tropical flourishing lands now look desolate and in ruin. The plants have been chewed up. The cordyline's been struggling for space ever since it reached the roof. And it's lost many of its leaves. All the crest is gone and what once was colourful and full of life now looks drained and grey. The beetles are still safe and healthy. The invaders don't attack them. They don't attack the grubs either. So why is the population struggling? Who are the invaders? And why are they a problem if I specifically added relatives of theirs to the enclosure in the first place? Well, that's simple. You've guessed by the title. Wood lice are the destroyers in this scenario. Overpopulating. Competing for food and resources. Munching on the live plants and turning the place into a barren wasteland. These are the same woodlice species that caused us issues before. The tropical grey and the giant orange woodlice. Very common species used in bioactive enclosures in the reptile keeping hobby. Known for their appetites and aggressive breeding habits. But the main thing these two are known for is their distinct cravings and desires for protein. And it appears, like before, They've developed an appetite for beetle eggs. It's rather surprising, but tropical grey wood lice and giant orange wood lice have been known to attack each other, and even eat each other when starved for protein. But luckily they're no match for the grub's pincers, or the beetle's tough exoskeleton. But the eggs, the eggs are fair game. And without the eggs, this beetle population has no chance of survival, with future generations being written off the map before they even have a chance to hatch. We built this enclosure to get away from these guys. We removed them for the entire enclosure, and every piece of decor. We even handpicked all the grubs and beetles out to ensure none were left mixed in. But just like a herd of wildebeest in the wild, the woodlice migrated from one land to another. Possibly from Charlie and Jason's enclosures, which have a strong population of these species. And they found just the perfect place once again, with a regular supply of fresh fruit, plants and protein for them to thrive and grow their numbers. Now we did introduce woodlice to the enclosure when we first set it up, but those were dwarf white woodlice, a smaller species that have a much smaller impact and a much smaller drive for protein. And they're still in there just not as prominent as the others. Dwarf white woodlice are much less likely to damage the plants. They typically just don't have much of a drive to eat live plants. They prefer dying or rotting organic matter, like leaves and rotten wood. It's not the first time we've dealt with this issue, and realistically there's only one way we can deal with it going forward. We can only really build a new enclosure, start over and try again with new decorations, new substrate and new plants at which point I'll probably find a space for them to reside indoors, to keep them away from evading populations again. However, I can't help make the link to a very real scenario wild regions have to endure due to human activities. This population of migrating woodlice invading these lands is a perfect metaphor for invasive species. Human activities bring in animals to areas, ecosystems and countries that don't naturally belong, or originate. And while sometimes these invasive species fail, other times they do a little too well. Outcompeting local fauna. 
bringing in new pathogens, behaviours and evolutions the local animals aren't equipped to defend against, causing destruction and competing animals out of life and home. Great examples of feral hogs in America, Burmese pythons in Florida, grey squirrels taken over from red squirrels in England. It's a great reminder of how careful we have to be to protect our local wildlife and the biodiversity it holds, to not release unwanted pets, to be wary of hitchhiking animals and vehicles, and reporting any suspicious circumstances or activities, whether human or animal, to the correct authorities. And for now there's not a lot I can do. My hands are tied up in the middle of another build at the moment and thankfully I don't have to worry about the beetles welfare because the woodlice don't really pose a threat to them. The worst case scenario is the lack of hatching eggs means we may have to restock with new grubs in the coming months to supplement the enclosure until we have the time and money to build something new for them. But for now, I'm planning on replacing a couple of the plants and sprucing the enclosure up to something nicer to look at again even though they'll inevitably be torn to pieces. But why would I do that? Because we've been lucky enough to have a special guest return on this coming month, and we'll be taking part in another collaboration video, with Shelby on Safari. There's not a lot that can be done right now, but I assure you, in future, these guys will see new lands once again. A new space for fresh generations to roam away from the possibility of the destructive species safe in their own version of Beetle Paradise.